living your best life. Most of you know of someone in your life, whether it's your friends or your family, that are overweight or obese, and it may even be yourself. According to the CDC Center of Health and Statistics, over 70% of adults in 2016 are considered to be overweight. And out of the same pool of statistics, 40% are considered to be obese. And any of us that struggle with being overweight and obese, we know all the negatives that come with it, such as increasing your chances of getting diabetes, heart disease, and certain forms of cancer. And not only that, but increasing your chances of getting anxiety, depression, and simply not wanting to get out of bed in the morning and do the things that you used to enjoy and love so much. In the 1950s, only 10% of adults were considered to be overweight or obese. And this drastic change is thanks to our society and how it's developed from then. And what I'm meaning by this is, say for instance, you go to the supermarket and you pick up a, a deal of plates, for, like, for example, from Walmart. That plate, on average, is 23% larger than it was in the 50s. And not only that, every corner you turn in almost every town in the United States, there's a fast food joint. It's easier to order food off of your phone. If you come home from a hard work's day of school or work, is it realistic that you're really going to sit there and make a nutritious meal that takes over an hour? Or are you going to make something quick that has a high calorie content or even run to your nearest McDonald's and pick something up? And even if you are on the go and want to get something nutritious, a simple salad may be over 750 calories. And so those of us that struggle with being overweight and obese, we don't really know where to turn, where to go. You know, we want to lose that weight. We, we want to reach our goal. But the first place that I went personally was to my phone to research what is the answer? Where can I find that solution? And so the first place that I turned was supplements because I had all these fitness gurus and people around me that were saying this is, how, this is what worked for them and, and this is how they ended up losing their weight to live their best life and be successful and happy. And so these companies market such things as body fat pills and, and fat burners and pre-workout and, you know, for instance, a 21-day workout plan that you lose 21 pounds. And as I bought these products because I wanted to lose that weight, I knew it was going to be difficult. If, it, if it's easy to lose weight, everyone would be able to do it. And so when I would take these pills and I could feel my heart rate increase a little bit, I, I felt a little sluggish at times. I didn't really understand why these, these items here were supposed to work. And so I, I researched more and realized that this isn't really what I want to be doing. It may work for some people, and it, but it doesn't work for me. But I didn't want to quit. I only lost a few pounds on these supplements here, but when I got out of it, it was stressful because I did feel like I quit, I, I quit what I was doing. And so I gained about 5 or 10 pounds after this, but I knew I needed to find a different solution. And so what I looked at instead of supplements was my diet. And so the first diet that I attempted was the keto diet. It made sense to me because... It, it advertises eating no carbs, high fat, and a moderate level of protein. And this made sense because you grow up saying, you grow up hearing that you should stay away from white foods such as tortillas and rice and, and bread and all these carbs, and this diet doesn't want you to eat that. So in my head, this was the solution. This was what I was supposed to do. And so as I got on this diet, I would come home from stressful days of school, and I simply wasn't able to eat a bowl of ice cream or have that piece of cake. It it wasn't something that you're supposed to do because as I researched it, the point of why this diet works is that it puts your body into a state of ketosis, meaning that because you're not eating any carbs, it's transferring your fat into energy. And so if you simply slip, uh, slip up and eat a piece of bread, it can disrupt that. And so it took a toll on me mentally to, to not be able to enjoy that food and to come home and dread what I was getting ready to eat after a stressful day. It wasn't something I was going to be able to maintain over the foreseeable future. And so I ended up quitting this diet, and it, I got so down on myself. It did work for a period of time. I lost about 15, 20 pounds on it, but I wasn't getting where I wanted to go. And so I looked for new answers, and the next diet that I saw was the paleo diet. It made sense to me originally because... You know, it suggests that you're supposed to eat the way that humans were when they first began. So say, for instance, in the Paleolithic era, you just hunt animals and pick food from the ground, no processed foods. You know, this seemed what was going to work to help me lose weight. And I, I was on this diet for a considerable amount of time, a few months, 
and I ended up losing about 20 to 25 pounds. But again, I was not able to eat the foods that I wanted, enjoying my meals. I, I couldn't have what I wanted. And I just didn't know where to go. And as I slowly knew that I did not want to do this diet, my mentality was draining. My self-confidence was going down the drain. My ego felt like I was dying. I, I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to be a quitter either. And as I quit this diet, I went to where I was stress eating all the time. I didn't want to go out and do the things that I used to enjoy, such as hanging out with friends or even playing video games. Nothing ever really came to me as enjoyable anymore. And so in my sophomore year in high school, I ended up getting to be over 300 pounds. I wore a 3XL shirt. And I felt awful in my mind because before I ever began those supplements, the keto diet or the paleo diet, I was heavier than before I started any of them. I had dug myself a hole when I was just trying my hardest. There had to be an answer. There's people all across the world that, that get to lose that weight and feel that successful feeling of getting where they want to go. You know, you can tell in these pictures, I'm not confident. Two of the pictures, I'm not even looking at it. Looking at it. I was disgusted in myself. I, half the time I wore a jacket, even in the summer, so people wouldn't see my body fat because I was so disgusted in myself. I couldn't believe it where I was. You know, I had dreams of being an orthopedic surgeon, and it felt like I'm never going to complete that. I can't even do something as simple as this. And so as I would lay in bed and not do anything that I enjoyed anymore, I was just watching a couple YouTube videos, and I discovered a man named David Goggins. Now, Goggins was a man that, as you can tell, you know, he, he's a stocky guy, but he was in the Air Force, and to live his best life, what he wanted to do was become a Navy SEAL. And so he went and spoke to his Navy recruiter about doing this, and the guy basically told him that he's going to have to lose half his body weight to even be considered for BUDS training to become a Navy SEAL. And so Goggins was in a place like many of us are where we want to lose that weight, we want to reach our goal, but we don't know where to go or what to do. You get on your phone and look for a diet plan or, or something that's going to help you, and everything conflicts with one another. Take this, don't take that, you know. Do this diet plan, run this amount every day. It, it, it's difficult. And so what Goggins did was he lifted under the rug and found something that no one ever talks about, how to actually do it scientifically. You know, what's the real answer besides a company just trying to sell you a product or a plan where someone's just trying to make money? And so Goggins ended up losing all of that weight and becoming a Navy SEAL. He completed his goal, and not only that, he's the only man in history in the United States to be in three special combat units and three branches of the military. So not only did he do this, he became an Army Ranger and an Air Force combat controller, becoming an elite physical athlete running ultra marathons. You know, Goggins was living his best life, and I knew I wanted to do the same. But I had to discover what was he doing scientifically for me to be able to do that. And so, you know, I began to, to look at what I needed to do. And as I did that, I discovered what is called the BMR. And so I want you all to imagine a, a four-digit number that's assigned to all of you. It's essentially how many calories you burn in a 24-hour period without any exercise, just simply eating and sleeping. And so I heard about this BMR, which means base metabolic rate. And so I researched it as much as I could to understand it, and I got on a BMR calculator. I simply typed that into my phone, and all it requires is your height, your weight, and your gender to find that number. And when I typed that in, my original BMR was 2,800 calories. And from the research that I had compiled, I knew I still needed to eat a good amount of food in order to lose weight. I needed to be able to tell my body that it's getting enough food to metabolize it and not hold on to it. And so I continued on this path, and I could eat what I wanted. I, I, I would get better results if I ate less processed foods, but I was still consistently losing a pound to two pounds a week. I could have that piece of cake. I could have that bowl of ice cream when I was stressed. And it was okay as long as I fit it into there. And so over time, I consistently did this. And as I would lose 5 to 10 pounds at a time, I would get back on the BMR calculator and adjust my calories accordingly. And so from there, I ended up losing about 120 pounds. I went from a 44 pant to a 32. And I felt like a massive weight had been lifted off of my shoulder. And it was something I could, that was sustainable, something I could do over the foreseeable future that was realistic, and it wasn't some plan that someone just made up. And it really helped me find new disciplines in life that I enjoyed and succeeded in. For instance, I wouldn't be here giving a, 
nutrition TED Talk two years ago. I would have never imagined that. I didn't even want to simply go out of my front door and speak with somebody or engage in any kind of form of conversation. And so throughout my journey, I've learned that in order to live my best life, I had to treat my body accordingly in a positive manner, mentally and physically. Thank you.